So today I'm joined by Jake Erb. And I believe, Jake, are you in the Philadelphia area? I am. I live about an hour north of Philadelphia, so the greater Philadelphia area. Okay, awesome. I met Jake on LinkedIn, and I've been snooping on your profile now as well. It's kind of getting a little more history on your background, but you had posted something that caught my attention because it was unusual. And you're always looking for someone taking a different approach to things in their pursuit of their Salesforce career. And you mentioned that you were taking my Salesforce administrator course, which is geared towards getting certified post certification. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to take my course, even though you already had your certification. Absolutely, Mike, I'd be happy to. So I just earned my certification within the past couple of weeks. But with my personality, I always like to learn something and know it and know it well. So I saw an opportunity, especially this past week with all the sales going on on Black Friday and that I said, I've heard so much about Mike and his courses. Why don't I spend a very fair price and the amount of money and invest in his course? And it's just another approach, really, in my opinion, on learning those basic admin responsibilities. Because as you know better than I, Salesforce is just so robust and it can do everything, which is awesome, but you know, you don't know what you don't know. So if you don't know how to do something, then you're, you're not any help there. So it's been paramount for me in being able to tackle learning all those things in a different fashion. Okay, awesome. And so you mentioned in your post as well that it was helping you to drill down into the fundamentals. So given that you passed the certification, what fundamentals did you feel that you were weak in or weren't quite gelling for you? I think that the certification test, if I can touch on that, it's a tricky one. They're, they're very, I found the questions to be quite difficult. They're tricky questions, and I think most people will agree with that. Some of them seem entry level, and it's like, okay, cool, I got, a, I got an easy question. Then the others are like, whoa. Um, I didn't prepare for that one quite as well, but I did well in the test regardless. But I felt that really just having another angle of learning anything, whether it's, you know, hey, how do I adjust login IP ranges? Or, you know, does the user's locale override the company locale? The little things like that that I think will be important in, in having an opportunity in the workplace, the things that you absolutely have to know, but you might not exactly see a question like that on the test because it might sound, you know, too elementary for the test questions, but it's important to know those things. Right. So I'm really curious, what were you doing before discovering Salesforce? Tell me more about your background. Absolutely. I'd be happy to. So I come from a sales background and specifically I worked in the plumbing and water treatment um, industry. So I started with a company, very small company, worked there for almost five years. And I started out as a technician. So installing water heaters, faucets, fixtures, toilets, you name it. You know, found myself under people's sinks quite a bit and, and getting wet and working late hours. And there's certainly nothing wrong with that. But when I graduated or gravitated, I should say, into a sales role, we were using a lot of different pieces of software. You know, we had HubSpot was one, that's a pretty popular one. And we're using Microsoft Teams and we are using this dispatching app and email and you know, I've Excel and I found myself double, triple entering data. And I said, I'm trying to produce, you know, as a an account executive here, there's got to be a better way. And you know, I quickly stumbled upon Salesforce and I said to myself, well, if I can learn this. You know, this is really the end all be all. You don't have to pay for all these subscriptions and and softwares as a service. And, you know, this could really be it, it really is a superpower if you're able to navigate it. And it just offers things that nothing else does. Gotcha. So at some point, I guess you pivoted from uh, looking at Salesforce more from an end user perspective to help you in your sales career to perhaps pivoting your own career to that of someone working more behind the scenes as far as on the administrative side, or perhaps you have other goals beyond that as well. So talk to me about that journey as far as making that pivot from uh, just this being a software tool to something that you could build your career upon. Absolutely. I Truth be told, I didn't have a lot of experience or any experience as an end user. I kind of jumped right in. I saw there was such a strong need for admins. And, and really, I, I saw the road ahead of me. That's a starting point. And some people just want to be an admin. That's fine. But really, I saw unlimited potential. I mean, just exponential growth within this industry. And I saw the opportunity with jobs. And I clearly saw there was a use case for it, because I was struggling and hurting in my own career. So I, I pretty much jumped right into that. And actually, the very first thing that was recommended to me was 
you, your courses, your name. I had actually worked with somebody years ago. I remembered seeing he had a couple Salesforce certifications via Facebook, I believe it was. I reached out to him and his name was Mike as well. And I said, hey, Mike, um, you know, can you tell me more about Salesforce? It's, it's interesting to me, but I'd like to hear from somebody who's who's um, in the business. And he had awesome things to say. And he said, look into, you know, obviously Trailhead um, and some other things. And he said, but absolutely, Mike Wheeler's courses are unparalleled. Awesome. So where are you at in your journey as far as launching your Salesforce career? Are you um, interviewing? Are you building apps? Are you building a portfolio? Or what's your approach as far as marketing yourself? Absolutely. I'm doing everything. I get up very early, usually 5 a.m., 6 at the latest, um, if I'm having an off day. And I start on LinkedIn. You know, I never realized the power of LinkedIn and, and how much time it can also take, too. But to answer your question more directly, I am actively interviewing. I'm working with recruiters. I'm independently reaching out to companies where I think I might be a good fit. Um, I also lead a study group. I have a really good team around me. We have a volunteer project we're working on. And then I'm always doing little independent projects just to be able to build a portfolio and you know it's one thing to learn about it but when you can really do the fun stuff and build something like an app or just build a use case in your own personal life it's awesome so right now i'm looking for that first opportunity and i couldn't be more excited about it okay yeah i, I think i'm anticipating great things for you jake because you. um you're approaching this different than most you know and part of that goes back to and i know i don't know much about you but just the willingness to not just like, okay, I'm certified, great, let's move on to the next thing, but being willing to recognize that there's some fundamentals you need to beef up on, also leading other groups, helping others, uh, doing some project work, and you're, you're a good example of making your own experience as well. So um, I think that that's why I even reached out to you was because it really caught my attention. And so that tells me you're doing things right. So it's just a matter of time. So I just want to give you a little note of encouragement that Thank you. you're going to accomplish great things. So uh, you just remind me of a few other people I've interviewed in the past that okay. go on to great things, you know. So anyway, uh, so I think that having that background in sales as well can be very insightful some of us, such as myself, didn't really have a sales background or an end user background. And so approaching Salesforce, not really understanding the why, you, you grasp the why of that. So tell me a little bit about um, if you've done any applying that sales background to your own um, career pursuits as far as marketing yourself and just trying to um, sell your services or sell yourself as a Salesforce professional. Is there any crossover. I know it's different than dealing with plumbing, but uh, any correlation? Absolutely. Somebody told me years ago, and I, I've been hearing it since, you are always interviewing, you are always selling yourself. That is the number one skill you can have, um, not to sound too cliche, but it is because whether it's you're building a relationship, a friendship, you know, you're at the grocery store, the doctor's office, or you know, a, a use case of your interviewing. You constantly are, you know, on a stage, in my opinion. You have to look presentable. You have to sound sharp. You have to be well prepared. You know, whether it's a casual phone call with somebody, maybe just catching up, or I'm big into reaching out to people that are in a position I want to be in or that are doing something I want to do or that teaching something that I'm learning, you know, in, in the uh, case of speaking with you. So I like to reach out to peers, maybe people who have graduated from a similar program or they just started within Salesforce. And I, I constantly like to pick their brain and just see, hey, what makes people tick and, and how does that work? So being comfortable speaking with people and, and being presentable has been very important because it's one thing to have you know, the hard skills, the technical skills, but if you don't know how to market yourself and, and present yourself well, and you know, I'll be honest, I'm always working on everything. I'm not perfect, but the two go hand in hand and pair very nicely. Do you have any other certifications on your radar or what, um, what, what's your ultimate goal as far as certifications, career path? Where do you see yourself in the future? A really good question because Salesforce is so large. I don't exactly know which certification is next. I've been kind of gauging what other people get, and some people go the route of consulting. To me, that I, I really like the idea of that. I like the idea of being able to help multiple clients and being able to say, "Hey, I can really find my niche or my niche and and specialize and help somebody out who might 
focus on one, you know, maybe the sales cloud or the service cloud, for example. But I'm not sure exactly what that next certification will look like. I just know I'd love to build my own book of business and continue building that and carrying forward that that sales skill set of mine and being able to just interact with people. And I think that's why this is such an awesome role to be able to get into because you're learning a skill that, like I said, it's, it's like a superpower, but you also need to have personable skills. You need to have those soft skills. You need to be able to ask people, you know, what do you want? And why do you need it? Let me find your pain points here and let me build a relationship. And if you can't, you know, have and, and, and feed and foster a good relationship, then people aren't going to want to work with you. So uh, it goes both ways there. Awesome. Well, that's, that's great stuff, Jake. So um, any other final parting words or anything you want to share as far as uh, encouraging others or inspiring or warning others <laughs> that are thinking about going down this journey? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's been a battle, an uphill battle for me. I mean, I always step back and, and look at how, you know, really the opportunity I have in front of me, the tools I have in front of me. So if I'm ever sitting there and saying, you know, I'm having a really hard time learning X, Y, and Z. You know, I, I really, it's it's stepping back and being thankful for the opportunity you have. I said, okay, I have a computer here. You know, I'm fully able to learn something. I have people and tools and a group and a support system to, to surround myself. So sometimes you might just need to step back, take a breather, get back into it. But I always find that reaching out to somebody is huge. And, you know, in this case, like I said, some people learn at different speeds and they learn at different techniques and being able, going back to why I was pairing this with, with Trailhead after I was certified, just finding another learning method or a teaching method in your position sometimes is paramount and in, in being able to really engrave that. Awesome. Great, great advice for others. And you're, I think you're a great example of not falling in the trap of what I call trivia based learning. A lot of students yes. that I see, they just want to do practice tests and memorize the answers, but then not really understand the why, the where, the whens of that. And so the more you can address those fundamentals from different angles, I'm all for it. So I just want to, uh, I just want to, it sounds a little weird to say congratulate you, but just to encourage you that uh, that is the right approach. And you're someone that I see that really gets it. And that's why I reached out, you know, and I think it's a good example for others to follow. And I would like to ask you a favor, actually, and I haven't sure. discussed this with you at all. I've done this one other time with an interviewee. Is that, okay. can, I, can I schedule an interview with you one year from today? And if we're both Absolutely. still around and kicking, I would love to touch <laughs> base and see what you're up to because I'm anticipating great things from you. So this gives you something to look forward to, me something to look forward to. And for others to see, you know, on the front end, here you are in this journey, but it's kind of documenting this over time sure. so that uh, people can see in a year's time what's possible in a pursuit of a Salesforce career. So are you willing to do that? Absolutely, Mike. It's going to hold me accountable. You know, was, you took the words out of my mouth. I want, you know, people to expect big things from me. Um, it's and that's just because I'm surrounded by, you know, the Salesforce Ohana, as we call it. There's just always somebody there to help you out, to pick you up, to push you forward. And I have no excuse not to be great in this. I'm just getting started. I'm fired up and, and I can't wait for that interview. So, yeah, let, let's get it scheduled. Let's let's touch base then, hopefully before then, obviously, but at least at that one year point and see what kind of progress I've made. I'd look forward to it and a challenge accepted. Definitely. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. We'll keep in touch in between those times, but this is kind of does give a little bit of a, a marker or uh, something to aspire to, to absolutely see where we're at. So awesome. Well, I appreciate your time, Jake, and uh, wish you the best of luck and, and we'll see you. See you soon. Thank you very much, Mike. It's been a pleasure and awesome opportunity. I look forward to staying in touch with you. All right. You bet.